All right. All right. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming for the talk. Um, today, I want to talk about um, sequential linear coding for multi-user Gaussian channels with active noisy feedback. And part of it, part of this work is joint work with uh, Rajesh Mishra and Haiji Kim at UT Austin. And like during the talk, like if if you have any questions, feel free to ask any questions. Like I think we have we will have enough time, um, so we can take questions in the middle. All right. So. I want to start with like a basic background of digital communication. Many of us already know. Uh, so digital communication, the, the theory of digital communication was uh, given by Shannon in 1948, where he showed that there exists a fundamental limit called capacity of a discrete memoryless point to point channel, where one can re communicate reliably at rates below this limit. And one cannot communicate reliably above this capacity. And since then, like, Mostly during nineties, we have found coding schemes such as LDPC codes and turbo codes, and even polar codes in 2010s uh, that achieve capacity and such codes are actually used in practice. For example, in our cell phones or modems, uh, we actually use uh, these codes that are, uh, that achieve capacity. And since, since then we have studied many multi-user channels also, um, such as Mac broadcast relay channel, and it is still an active area of research to know like what is the capacity and the capacity achieving schemes for many of these channels. So still there's a lot of territory, uh, mostly like under network information theory, uh, where we really don't know uh, what is the capacity for these kind of channels. Um, so one question is how, if we have feedback in the communication, how can we do better communication? And uh, in 1956, Shannon showed that there's a negative result where feedback does not increase the capacity of a discrete memoryless point-to-point -point channel with feedback. And since then, like the <clears throat> for the point-to-point -point channel with noiseless feedback, for example, Horstein in 1963 presented a capacity achieving scheme for binary symmetric channel. Um, Shalji Kalath in 1966 um, uh, gave a scheme for Gaussian channel. And Scheibitz and Feder basically extended or generalized both of these schemes for an arbitrary point-to-point -point channel, uh, which is called posterior matching scheme. And that achieves capacity uh, for any point-to-point -point channel with noiseless feedback. So I just want to highlight one thing that here, shaldwick kellat scheme is basically, which is a scheme for Gaussian channel, is uh, inspired by another scheme called robbins Munro scheme. And again, it's this the, the way I think the way they came up with the scheme is like a it's a like intuitive process like a human ingenuity that they they saw that maybe we can use that Robin Sondro scheme and call this channel and it works but we don't have like a systematic way of uh, finding the scheme like you know through um, maybe a dynamic program or something like that so this is kind of what is broadly known for channels with noiseless feedback and. One can ask the question that if uh, the feedback does not increase the capacity, what's the point of feedback? Does it really help? What are the advantages of having uh, feedback in a communication channel? And there are uh, many advantages that uh, people have seen so far. For example, we know that the error exponents for the shaljwick kellat scheme for the Gaussian channels uh, are double exponential. Uh, and in general, without feedback uh, for LDPC codes, the probability decays exponentially. So this is way better. Uh, the coding and the decoding coding and decoding is very simple. And, and these uh, schemes are sequential. So they're finite, mostly sequential and they're finite length, uh, which means that uh, in a standard communication, for example, if, I'm, if I have an LDPC code, uh, generally the block size is like pretty large, something in thousands. So if I want to decode a message, I have to wait for like, you know, thousand symbols. Uh, to decode it properly, so there's a there's a lot of latency in the in the in the uh, communication. Whereas if things are finite length, maybe I can decode it by twenty symbols. Then there's very low lat latency in the communication, and these kind of uh, coding schemes are specially suited for uh, uh, things like video calls or financial data communication and so on. Um, so even even if we have a, a, a we know the schemes that achieve capacity, having schemes which are finite length and low latency are still very important. And not just that, this was for point to point channel. We know that for multi user channels, for example, for a Mac channel with feedback, Garden and Bull showed that the capacity of the channel uh, actually increases with feedback. So, feedback can actually help increase capacity for multi user channels. Um, and finally, I just uh, I want to mention that in Ozaro in 1986 provided a linear uh, Shalja Kerlath like scheme for the Gaussian Mac with feedback, which achieves 
capacity. And uh, capacity is also known for what are called co-volume channels uh, in Mac channel with feedback, uh, where co-volume channels are defined as follows. So if I have two transmitters, one transmitter can decode the message or, or the transmitted symbol of the other transmitter by looking at its own transmission and the feedback. So the, its own transmission and feedback uh, gives it the exact information about what was the other uh, transmitted symbol by the other player. So if, if it so happens that I have a channel like this, which are, which we call as covalent channels, we know the capacity of Mac channel with feedback. In general, um, for the most time, for the most part, we did not know the capacity of Mac channel with feedback, but very recently, actually last week, I posted a paper uh, where I showed that there is a dynamic program to compute the capacity of this channel. So it's a very recent result where we do know um, uh, a computational way to compute the capacity of these channels. All right, so this is what is what was broadly known for channels with noiseless feedback. Now, if I want to go to noisy feedback, what is what do we know? So for the no, for the noisy feedback, uh, there are very few results. Uh, I'll just mention some of them. Uh, so in 2011, uh, Young and Kim Lapidoth and Weissman showed that for a Gaussian point-to-point -point channel with passive noisy feedback, um, no linear scheme can achieve any positive. And that's again a negative um, result. Um, Chans and Love had shown that there exists, they, they get basically linear coding scheme for the uh, Gaussian point-to-point -point channel with passive noisy feedback. Um, and I'll compare our results to that scheme. And not too long ago, recent, rather recently, uh, Kim et al. in 2017 provided a machine learning neural, ne neural uh, network-based architecture and showed that their deep code performs way better uh, than what is the state of the art right now, which is like, you know, if you want to use the standard uh, uh, scheme for noiseless feedback in on the noisy channels. Uh, so basically, I think it just like shows that uh, the the state of the art for communication of noisy feedback channels is, is very bad, uh, theoretically speaking. And uh, this this result shows that um, the neural network can perform hundred to thousand times better uh, than like just using the scheme for noiseless channels. Um, but again, like. This is a great. This is uh, this is good result that uh, shows that maybe the machine knows how to do better and humans don't. And that's that's the question. Like you know, why? Like you know, since 1956 when Shannon first studied uh, the first channel with feedback, why is still even like till 2022 we don't have a mathematical framework to study these channels? Why are they so hard? Right. That's the kind of question I first wanted to ask in this talk. And also, I want to say I would just want to briefly say that. Um, Part of this work is actually motivated by this uh, work by Kim et al, where they showed that machines can do so much better. So when when I when I saw that uh, there's a way that machine can ha machine has a notion of state for these channels, um, I thought that maybe uh, maybe one can actually design a state, which I eventually do, which I'll talk about at this talk. So these are some uh, two quotes that I took from uh, uh, from the thesis of Grammar in 1998. Um, he 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 quotes these two results, which kind of like tell you tell us like you know why the, why these problems are so hard. So the first uh, first quote is by Lucky in seventy three, which is a review paper on uh, Shannon's original paper in nineteen forty eight. Uh, uh, it says that in the case of feedback communication, the basic challenges of uh, challenges of reality have not been met, except for certain space communication uses where noiseless feedback is well approximated. The theoretical results do not show how to improve real systems. Whether this is the fault of the real systems or the designers or the theory or the theorists remains to be seen. And the second quote is by Massey, who is the, the PhD advisor of Kramer. It says, uh, the, relative the relatively important role that feedback plays in real communication systems would lead one to expect that theory should play an important role in designing a system. Even today, it is rather surprising that after almost 50 years since its birth as a science, Information theory has only rarely been applied to communications that incorporate feedback. So again, this just to tell you like tell us that uh, even today, like we don't really know how to use feedback in a meaningful way, and that's that's rather sad. Like you know that uh, we don't have a theory to uh, study these kind of channels, and this is exactly like you know where uh, this talks come come in. All right. So first, I want to argue that this problem is basically a problem of decentralized control. What do I mean by that? So in a point-to-point -point channel with noiseless feedback, let's just uh, focus on the noiseless feedback right now. There are two controllers. One is the sender and the receiver. 
So send at each time the sender has to decide what symbol to transmit. So this is the control action that uh, the sender has and the receiver at the end of time horizon T wants to estimate the message. So the receiver's decision is to estimate the message and jointly they, their goal is to minimize the probability of error. Okay. So there are two controllers, sender and the receiver. Now, since I have a noiseless feedback, then both the sender and the receiver have common knowledge of the symbols received by the receiver. So this is a, this is a decentralized control problem with common information. In general, we know that decentralized control problems are pretty hard. And uh, I refer to uh, this counter example of Everett Simhausen in 1968, where he showed that very simple looking uh, problem with the two uh, controllers, uh, lean, uh, Gaussian LQG case, um, is very hard. We, uh, there does not exist a linear policy that is optimal to just show us that how deceptively hard these kind of problems are. Um, but recently in 2013, actually, it was shown that there exists a dynamic programming framework to analyze control problems with common information. Um, so that is one of the reasons that even, uh, even, uh, point to point channel with noise, less feedback where the two agents do have common information. There exists a framework to analyze these control problems. They're relatively easy, but for the problems uh, with noisy feedback, which is which are which are the decentralized control problems without any common information, there's no such framework. There's there is no dynamic programming framework, and that's why these problems are really hard. And again, I'll talk about it a little bit, like why there is no dynamic programming framework. But before going there, I want to just like tell you if somebody here does not know what a dynamic program is or why it is so powerful. I just want to like, you know, take a little detour, uh, talk about a very simple example um, in dynamic uh, programming. So suppose like, you know, there's an Apple seller, somebody like, you know, sells Apple near your house and she has like X T amount of apples on day T. Um, she makes a decision to buy UT amount of Apple on day T and WT is the random demand she gets on that day. Okay. So on the next day, the amount of Apple, the stock of Apple she has is the stock on the previous day, plus the apples that she purchased minus the demand she got. And this is always positive. So I just put a positive sign. So it's a very simple, uh, update, uh, rule for the stock of the app. Now at each day, she has to decide how many apples should she buy? You know, so the, uh, the action UT is a function of X one to XT, uh, where GT is her strategy. So UT is equal to GT of X1 to X3. This is the information she has, and this is the decision that she has to make. And each day, let's say like, you know, she gets a reward, which is a function of like XT and UT. And this reward could be the profit she makes, or if some of the apples go bad, like this is the loss she incurs because of the bad apples and so on. And in general, her objective is to maximize, let's say the amount of reward she gets over some finite time horizon T. Okay. So this is like a very classical, simple, uh, stochastic control problem, single agent. So in this case, recall that the action UT is a function of, uh, some arbitrary function of X one to X T. Okay. So the question that I want to ask is how many possible strategies are there, uh, um, for her to, uh, optimize this problem. So there are, uh, there are, uh, script U to the power script X to power capital T possible number of strategies, um, uh, for her. Okay. Um, this is like a simple, uh, combinatorial, um, argument. So basically the number of strategies go grow double exponential in time. T. Okay. That's kind of the complexity, uh, of the problem. So that's huge. Okay. Um, but if we know that the demand she gets is an IAD, uh, is IAD. Then we know that, you know, that the process is a, a control marker process, and then there exists a dynamic program to compute optimal policies. And the way dynamic program goes is as follows that at time capital T plus one, you, you evaluate the V function to be equal to zero. And then backward recursively, you compute for each time T you compute the optimal action UT star that maximizes the current reward and the reward to go. And the uh, value function is then found at time T using this. So there's a T missing here. Um, but this is the classic dynamic program and the complexity of this dynamic program is linear in time. So basically if I know that the, de the demand is IID, I reduce my complexity from double exponential in time to linear in time. And that's like a huge simplification just to like, you know, tell you, uh, uh, 
uh, how big of how big uh, of a reduction it is if i have binary action in binary state space and suppose i want to like optimize a dynamic optimization problem for time horizon 10 the number of possible strategies are 2 to the power 1024 that's way 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 more than the total number of atoms in the universe so even for time horizon 10 which seems like a very small time horizon there's no possible way that you can solve this problem but if I if I want if I can use dynamic program, the number of computations I have to do is forty with DP. So the 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 reduction is two to the power one zero two four to forty. That's like how big uh, of uh, simplification dynamic programming is, and that's why like if if you ever encounter a problem like you know which is a dynamic optimization problem, your best chance to solve that problem is to use dynamic programming in some. Way. If we don't have dynamic programming, there's almost no hope, like you know, to solve any of these problems. Okay, all right. So, and that's one of the reasons that uh, uh, in real world there are many applications where one uses dynamic programming. For example, in iterative decoding, resource allocation problems, shortest path algorithms, sequential hypothesis. Almost every problem, most of the problems that you we see in the real world, uh, you have to use uh, dynamic programming. All right, so now let me come back to uh, the noisy feedback problem and let me ask the question. So uh, it's, a, it's a decentralized control problem um, uh, with, without any common information. Is there a still a way for me to use dynamic program? Because if there's no way for me to use dynamic program, the complexity of the problem is gonna grow double exponentially and I cannot hope to solve this problem, okay? So I want to find a state of the system, like in some sense with respect to which I can uh, decompose this problem. Um, and this is, this is, uh, what I try to do here. So like, uh, so just to, uh, give you some definition of what this problem is. So suppose like, you know, there's a sender, sender observes a message M and, um, at each time T sender wants to transmit a symbol X S of T at time T and the receiver receives a symbol Y T of R, uh, through a noisy or discrete memory channel. Uh, so the receiver is passive in the sense that the whatever symbol receiver receives yt of r it just sends back okay uh, so uh, receiver sends back yt of r and through a noisy channel and then uh, sender receives yt of s through a noisy channel and we assume that these two channels are independent uh, so at any time t uh, the, the what is the information av uh, available to the uh, sender uh, its own message M and the feedback symbols from one to T minus one. So any uh, symbol excess of T that it transmitted at time T is basically some arbitrary function of this message and the received symbols excess one to T minus one. Okay. Now the receiver's decision at time T capital T is basically the estimate of the message M. And that is a the some arbitrary function of all the information that it has, which is y r of one to capital t okay uh and our objective in this case is to uh, minimize the probability uh, the probability of error which is probability that the m hat is not equal to m and we want to minimize it with respect to all possible strategies of the sender and the receiver okay so this is the definition of the problem any any questions so far is there everything clear all right um so, so the question is why decentralized control with common without common information is so hard. Okay, uh, so for point-to-point -point channel uh, uh, with noisy feedback, uh, based on the received information of the receiver, the receiver has to put a belief pi t on the sender's message because uh, send, uh, receiver does not observe the message m, so it puts a belief on the sender's message m. Now, since the sender does not observe the receiver's symbol, so send, sender is also getting this feedback, which is noisy. So based on the feedback, sender has to put a belief on the receiver's belief because sender does not know what the receiver has uh, seen so far. So sender puts a belief on the receiver's belief on the sender's message, okay? Now, sender, now the receiver does not know what the sender has observed. So receiver has to put a belief on the message as well as the sender's belief on the receiver's belief on the sender's message. And then this goes on forever. So since they have different information, each, every person has to put the belief on the other person's belief. And there's a, this infinite regress of higher order beliefs that you cannot bypass. Okay. That's the fundamental problem that comes about in decentralized com, uh, control without any common information. Okay. 
Now, what happens if we do have common information? For example, suppose the feedback is noiseless. Why do why don't we uh, why don't we come across this problem? Then it what happens is that the sender has exact same information as the receiver, which is the uh, feedback uh, sent by the receiver. So since both of them have the same information, both the sender can perfectly observe the receiver's first order view. So once since both have the com this common belief uh, that is observed by both of them. The, the receiver, the sender does not need to put another belief and the receiver doesn't have to put another belief and so on. So the, it kind of breaks this infinite uh, layers of hierarchy that comes about in uh, control without any common information. Okay. And one, one uh, interesting question here could be that, uh, is there any question with the common randomness that comes about in information theory in many, many times? Uh, uh, so that's, that's a side question. Uh, but but this kind of broadly tells us why these problems these problems are hard okay because of this infinite regress of higher order beliefs all right so i go back to this uh, disc uh, this noisy feedback channel so this is the new idea that i use in this channels where i assume that suppose sender uh sender maintains a controller a private controller at its own end let's call it ut of s where ut of s is updated using previous state us of t minus one its own message and the received noisy feedback okay so at each point of time the the uh, sender updates its uh, its controller using this and let's call it like auxiliary controller where where gt is still open to design uh, so we will still have to figure out what's the best gt and once you decide it is a known function by both the transmitter and the receiver now at each point of time, uh, we assume that the sender uh, takes the uh, or sends a symbol XS of T as a function of M and US of T. So in some sense, US of T is the state of the system that uh, summarizes all the um, noisy feedback it has observed. Okay. So at each point of time, sender sends messages as a function of M and US of T. So receiver maintains a belief on message M. So receiver maintains a belief called pi r. Let, let me call it uh, pi r of t. Receiver's belief on message m, which is a probability uh, a belief on m given all the information that the receiver has, which is y r of one to t. And this belief is a function of phi and g, which are phi is the strategy of the sender, and g is the uh, update function of the state. So one can show that this belief of the receiver can be updated as follows. So pi r of t can be updated as pi r of t minus one. The previous belief, uh, the strategy of the sender, the update of update uh, function of the state, and the new symbol the receiver received. So receiver can update this belief sequentially, where this update function fr is independent of the strategies. Okay, and this is basically Bayes rule. So using Bayes rule, you can show that there exists this update function of the belief of the receiver. Now the sender puts a belief maintains a belief pi s of t on the receiver's belief. So we assume that the sender puts a belief on the receiver's belief, which is a function of all the information that the sender has till time t, and is also a function of the strategy and the update function of the t. So this is all the information that, this, that the sender has till time t, and it puts a belief on uh, the receiver's, uh, receiver's private belief, a pri the belief pi r t. Okay. And again, using Bayes rule, one can show that this belief also has this nice update structure where pi s of t plus one can be updated using the previous belief, the strategy, the update rule, uh, the state, us of t, which is perfectly observed by the sender, uh, its message m, and the feedback it received. And again, this fs is independent of the strategies of the previous. So I'll just like recap what I did. I showed that uh, the sender maintains some state uts. It, the receiver puts a belief on sender's message given all, all the information it has, and this, uh, this belief has an update. Sender puts a belief on the receiver's belief, and again, this belief also has a nice update. Now, I make an assumption here that suppose there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between pi ts and uts. Uh, why, why that could be true? Because both of these uh, processes, control processes, are maintained by the sender and are driven by the strategy and the information available to the center. So both are both of them are driven by similar processes. And, and suppose it so happens that somehow there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between 
the the belief pi ts and uts then i have a dynamic program to actually decompose this problem which goes as follows so at the receiver side the receiver is going to estimate the message m by by uh, arg by maximizing uh, the belief uh, or doing the ml using uh, its belief on message m uh, so this is the resulting probability of error so i'm going to assume that this let's say this is my terminal cost i want to minimize the probability of error at time capital t so the probability of error that the receiver makes uh, receiver makes an error about the message m so my i can i can write a dynamic program in the following way and this this is a dynamic program of the sense of the sender so at time capital t uh, this is the cost of a receiver making uh, an error and then backward recursively i can i can max i can minimize this cost to go function over all possible strategies phi t rather this should be phi t of s and remember and note here that this is very different from the dynamic kind of program that i showed you before where uh in a, in a in a standard dynamic program that i showed you uh i am maximizing over the action u of the of the player okay in this case i am maximizing over the whole strategy at time t so the the space of computation is still very big but again the problem is very hard and still i have a way to decompose this problem and uh, do dynamic programming so that's kind of the cost i have to pay uh with minimize minimizing this cost to go with respect to the strategy i'm able to actually have a dynamic program and actually able to solve it at least conceptually okay this problem any questions so far so overall again like i'll just like recap it a little bit uh i uh i started with some beliefs i started with a with a control system with a uh, auxiliary controller at the center um i i i gave the receiver has a belief on the sender's message given its information the sender has a has a belief on the receiver's belief given its information and i assume that the sender's belief and this uh auxiliary controller have a one to one mapping and if they do then i can write this dynamic program where i can i'm minimizing it with respect to the strategy of the uh, sender at time t okay so this is kind of broadly uh, the framework again uh, there are there is one big assumption that i make with that there is a one to one correspondence between correspondence between pi ts and uts and the dynamic program uh, involves belief on beliefs and also uh, i'm minimizing with respect to the strategies okay so now let's see like you know this is this is a, a framework can i use this framework practically in any channels okay can i ask a question yes yes so when you say belief uh, sender is maintaining a belief on the beliefs of receiver sender mm -hmm. doesn't is sender basically keeping track of like all possible all possible cases which the receiver could have received in the time horizon t or rather all possible beliefs that the receiver can maintain yeah okay so because yeah because sender doesn't really know what receiver actually received right so right. Okay. okay thank you sure all right so now let's see like you know i have a framework can i use that framework in any practical sense for any channels and this is like you know uh, we study the gaussian channel so for a gaussian channel suppose like you know uh, there is a sender which observes a message m uh, i have an additive gaussian channel here uh this is the forward channel this is the backward channel both of them are additive gaussian channels and i'm going to assume that they are zero mean uh their variances are known and uh, they are independent of each other also i'm going to assume that everything is linear the strategy that the sender is using is linear the update that the sender is using to uh, update its state is linear so everything is linear everything is gaussian so all the random variables involved in this whole process will be jointly gaussian okay um so uh, i'll just i'll just repeat everything in this figure so the receive symbol by the receiver is uh, xts the uh, transmitted symbol by the sender plus the noise similarly the received the feedback is um Uh, is equal to the symbol sent by the receiver plus noise and this uh, recall that this is passive feedback so the receiver is just transmitting whatever it is it received and the transmitter is updating its uh, state using this linear controller and then it's also transmitting 
uh, the symbol with respect uh, again using this linear strategy. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna call a s b s and c s of t as the uh, as a symbol g s of t. This is basically the controller controller parameters. Okay, and also I'm gonna assume that this d s of t is equal to square root of power divided by the um, uh, divided by the standard deviation of u s of t, and this basically ensures that the variance of x s of t is equal to p t of s. And uh, P T F S is like some param parameter of the problem that I still have the leverage to play around. All right. So now, since the strategies and the state updates are linear, all the random variables involved in the process are jointly Gaussian. Great. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to observe two processes. One process is Q T, which is basically a vector of the message M and the uh, controller of the sender U T of S. So if I if I look at this vector, then I can say that the sigma Q of T, which is the uh, covariance matrix of Q T, can be update can be updated as follows. So sigma Q of T plus one is can be updated using sigma Q of T and the parameters of the controller. So this sigma has a nice update function. Now the receiver. I'm also going to look at another process, which is uh, at the receiver. So suppose receiver. I I look at the vector. Uh, of message M, uh, the controller state controller state U S of T or sender state U S of T, and the receivers receive symbol Y R of T. So then, I look at so I look at this process. This is again everything is joint, jointly Gaussian, and I condition on the information received by the receiver till time t. So this um, uh, this covariance matrix is basically. Uh, Observed, uh, observed uh, process at the receiver. So since I'm conditioning it at by at the uh, by the information of the receiver at time t, uh, this is the receiver's observed process, and in there lies the m hat. So I I can I can look at m hat like you know because uh, that is the expectation of m given all the information that the receiver has till time t. So this is the covariance of this uh, process. And then again, I can show that this covariance can be updated in the following way: that uh, sigma r of t plus one can be updated using sigma r of t and uh, the parameters of the controller. Okay. All right. So based on this, now I have a dynamic program to actually solve this problem as follows. So I'm going to assume. So this is a dynamic program for instantaneous power constraint, and this goes as follows. So we assume that the sender sender has instantaneous power constraint such that the variance of x s of t, uh, which is equal to p s of t, is less than equal to let's say total some total power p s divided by time t. So at each each time t, I want to limit the uh, instantaneous power, and be, from before I know that the the uh, the state of the system sigma q and sigma r can be updated using g s of t. So I have I have the following dynamic program. At time capital T, my cost is basically I want to minimize the probability of error. And what is the probability of error here? I want to minimize uh, the the uh, the sigma r of capital T of one comma one. What is this? This is basically the variance in the message uh, variance of pi r of t. So remember that I had this belief pi r, and this first entry. Of this sigma r is basically the variance of the message, uh, condition on all the information of the receiver. So, con so condition on all the information of the receiver. I want to minimize this variance, and then backward recursively, I I can I can solve this dynamic program where I'm minimizing with respect to the parameters of G S because this whole process is basically a deterministic process that is driven by the parameters G S. So I I compute these parameters. I go backward. And then I uh, define the VT at time t uh, in a standard way, and this whole procedure basically transforms a decentralized control problem without any common information to a single agent deterministic dynamic program. Okay, so that's kind of like a very powerful technique to uh, decompose this channel. So again, like broadly speaking, for the Gaussian channel, I have I have these new state of the system. Which is determ which deterministically evolves, and basically I can use a deterministic dynamic program to actually solve for the optimum strategies of the players. Okay, I can also look at the another problem, which is like say the total power constraint. And in this case, what happens is that uh, I assume that 
uh, I have a total power constraint. So sum of the variance of excess of T from one to capital T is upper bounded by P of S. In this case, I introduce a new variable in the state. Let me call it psi S of T, which represents the total remaining power budget of the sender at time T. And I assume that psi S of one is basically P of S and psi S of T plus one is update the budget at time T plus one is, is equal to the budget at time T minus the power I use at time T. Okay. So uh, again, now I can show that I have this new state of the system where I have previous state sigma Q and sigma R and this new variable sigma S, which is the budget power budget. And they can be updated using uh, this uh, update function. And then again, I have a new, or I have a different kind of dynamic program where at time capital T again, I, my cost to go is to minimize the uh, variance of the message and then backward recursively, I, uh, I find the, the best parameters of the controller as well as the power uh, to be used at time T in a backward recursive way. And then I compute V of T. Okay. So again, this is like standard dynamic program. Again, I have a deterministic dynamic program to uh, find the parameters of the update function GT and as well as the uh, power uh, to be uh, power to be used at time. Any questions? So far? Okay. All right. So like I just showed you that I, I have, I gave a, I gave a broad scheme for a general point to point channel with noisy feedback. And I specialized that scheme for the Gaussian case and showed that there's a, there exists a deterministic dynamic program to solve for that kind of those kind of channels. And we actually solved this. This is, um, in a paper in ISIT, where we find that these are the value functions. Um, this is the value function that we get, like doing the backward recursive for the instantaneous power constraint. And this is the uh, coefficients. So we, uh, we assume that the AS and AS is equal to one, BST is equal to zero. And the CS, op the optimum CS that we get is basically this function, which is function of some KN parameter, which again, you find it backward recursively. Okay. So overall, we, we actually, we are able to analytically solve this dynamic program for instantaneous power constraint. Um, and we also show that when we assume, when we go back to the noiseless case, that is when the sigma B is equal to zero, then we get the shaljuk kellat scheme. So basically shaljuk kellat scheme is uh, optimal within our framework and we get, get, get that uh, scheme back when the channel is actually noiseless. Okay. And this is the performance. So a blue curve is basically noiseless. Uh, so this is the probability of error uh, in DB log scale. And uh, this is the noiseless case. And this is like, as we get more and more noisy, like this, these are the curves that we get. Okay. This is like the value function. And I just want to remark here that the, the noiseless case is, uh, the value function is, uh, growing down exponentially, whereas all of these other curves are polynomial. And that also like tells us that the, uh, the, this confirms the result by, uh, young and came Lapidoth and Weissman that the, the rate we, we don't achieve any positive rate. Uh, it's a zero rate scheme. Okay. Uh, similarly, this is the, another comparison where this red curve is our DP for the sum power constraint. And this is the blue curve is like, you know, the, the received SNR for the uh, chance and love scheme. So we are doing better than chance and, chance and love for the uh, low, low power constraint. All right. Uh, but chance and love is like, uh, uh, a Houston scheme, I would say they don't have any justification why they came up with this. Uh, whereas we have, uh, we find it using our dynamic programming methodology. All right. Now I want to, so this was like a Gaussian case. Now we can extend that now that we have like solved a very simple case. Now we can extend that to many different channels, which is what I want to show here. So uh, here I, I, I can also consider the case when the receiver is also actively sending feedback. So it's not a passive receiver. So at each time the receiver observes some uh, uh, symbols and it also maintains a controller at its own side. And then it transmit a symbol. So basically in some sense, it's trying to compress all the information it has received so far to send the most optimal thing it can uh, in linearly within the class of linear uh, updates. And then it sends this symbol XTR and then uh, the receive the 
uh, sender gets YTS and so on. So everything is same except for the fact that the now, now receiver is also actively encoding linearly. Okay. Uh, so when the receiver is active again, like I can use the exact same methodology uh, where uh, the only difference is, is now I'm going to maintain a controller at the receiver. Um, so again, I can show that uh, now my now my process. There are two processes that I have. One is the uncon unconditioned process, which is which consists of the message M U R of T and U S of T. So U R of T is the controller at the at the receiver, and the U S of T is the controller at the sender. And then I can show that the unconditioned covariance matrix of this Q T can be updated uh, using this update function, which is again uh, updated using the previous state the uh, control parameters of the sender and the con and the controller parameters of the receiver. Then I also have another conditioned process at the receiver where this is um, this is the vector that the receiver has, which consists of the message, the con the controller uh, at the receiver, controller at the sender, and its obs observed information at time t. And then I can this is the this is the conditioned process, so I condition it on the uh, information uh, received by the receiver till time t, and then I can show show that again this conditioned process, the covariance matrix can also be updated in a deterministic fashion using the previous state and the uh, GST and GRT, which are the parameters of the controllers of the senders and the receiver. And then again, in a very similar way, I have a dynamic program to actually solve for this problem, where again at time capital T, I uh, equate the cost to go function as uh, sigma r of capital T of one comma one, which is the variance of the message at time t at the receiver, and then in a backward recursive way, I compute the optimum parameters. This should be G S and G R. There should be both G S and G R here. So in backward recursive way, I I find the parameters of both the senders and the receiver, and I plug that back in. I find the V T and so on. So again, like I have a deterministic dynamic program to compute the linear policies of both the sender and the receiver in this active case as well. Okay. Any questions? All right. Um, so again, in, in a similar way, I can also do it for, this was for the instantaneous power constraint. I can do it for the total power constraint, uh, where again, I, I'm going to introduce a power budget for both sender and the receiver. And again, backward recursively, I'm going to compute uh, the power as well as the uh, controller parameter. All right. So now I just want to like finally say that this I I I presented a general channel, a point-to-point -point channel. I looked at two cases, Gaussian with passive feedback and Gaussian with active feedback. And now I want to show you that basically this is a new idea. And I can use this new idea in pretty much any Gaussian feedback channel that I can think of. Okay. So let's let's take some examples. Suppose I have like you know Mac channel with feedback. So here I have two senders, sender one and sender two, sender one observes M1, sender two observes M2. And uh, I, they, both of them transmit some symbols, XT of S1 and XT of S2. Uh, the receiver receives YT of R. This is additive Mac channel. And then receiver also is active. So receiver maintains a controller UTR and sends back XT of R. And this is sent back to both the senders through again a noisy channel. So this is in some sense, the forward channel is a Mac channel. The backward channel is a broadcast channel. Um, so the, the sender one observes some YTS, YT of S1 uh, noisily and sender two observes YT of S2. And then both of them, each of them is fed to their own respective controllers and then sender use that controller to send the next um, symbol, okay? So again, this is kind of looks very complicated, but again, like the basic process is kind of the same. Once you like, you know, put these controllers at each of the sender and the receiver, uh, you again get uh, a deterministic update of the corresponding covariance matrices. And then again, you have a dynamic program where you can find the optimum parameters of both the, send both the senders and the receiver. And you can basically solve for this problem. Okay, any questions? All right, so this was Mac with feedback. I can again um, do this. Yes. So we have one question from the audience. So Anna asks, like, what does the controllers do at the sender or receiver? What kind of changes do they make? What kind of changes do they make? Yeah. 
Um, so there's no difference between like this, this. Um, so re remember that in, in the, in the previous case, for example, when I had a, a point to point channel, I had, there was only one sender and the one receiver, the senders has this controller, linear controller. The receiver has this linear controller. Um, now the only difference is that this two senders have two different controllers. This sender, uh, controls, uh, a, a process that, uh, that is updated using its own information. Similarly, sender two updates this controller using its own private info, uh, private observation, and the receiver controls its own controller using its own information. So all of these, there are three controllers. They, since they, all of them have different information, they have different controllers. Uh, all of them are independent. Nobody can observe the other person's controller yet. Things are kind of like, you know, working out if that makes sense. Okay. Um, so again, like I, this is Mac channel with feedback with noisy feedback again, as far as I, I know, I don't think, uh, anybody has even looked at this channel because this is uh, noisy feedback is again, a very uncharted territory. And this is probably for the first time. Like we are even looking at these kind of channels. Uh, I can do the same thing for a uh, broadcast channel. So again, like for the broadcast channel, suppose I have a sender, which has two messages M1 and M2 for receiver one and receiver two respectively. So the sender broadcasts a symbol XS T and the receiver observes YR one of T and YR receive two observes YR two of T through independent Gaussian additive channels. And then the receiver sends back. Uh, again, like receiver maintains its receiver one maintains its own controller receiver two maintain its own controller, um, receiver two sends back something receiver one sends back something it gets, get at, gets, at, gets added to noise and is observed by the sender. So in some sense, again, this broad, this is broadcast in forward and Mac channel in the backward. And then the sender maintains its in controller using its own permission. So again, in the same, in it's the same spirit, like, you know, the sender has its own controller. The receiver one has its own controller. Receiver two has its own controller, uh, which they're privately maintaining using their own information. And one can write a dynamic program where, where the, where the covariance matrices of the receivers processes will be updated using the parameters of all the controllers together. And then I can, in principle, solve these uh, dynamic program or to find the linear strategies within this optimum strategies within this class of linear strategies. Okay. Um, so I, I will just browse through since we know the idea now, like this is for, this was for the broadcast channel. I can say it, I can do the same for relay channel. And the reason for me if to like, just show this is because these are all fundamental channels. People have studied like in network information theory, for example. Uh, so my whole point is that you can take any channel, like, you know, from one of these books, like classic channels and information theory and use these ideas to find the optimum, um, uh, uh, optimum strategies within this class of linear strategies. So again, this relay channel relay sender sends some, uh, message, which is a broadcast to both relay and the receiver receiver sends back something which is sends back a symbol, which is noiseless noisily observed by sender and the relay. And then again, both all the three parties maintain their own controllers. And then again, you have a dynamic program, um, that you can uh, find optimal strategies. Same thing for MIMO channel with, so again, I have a MIMO channel sender ha, sender is a, my has a MIMO channel forward channel and a MIMO backward channel, AWGN. And again, I can do the same thing. I can the receiver has a controller, sender has a controller, and then I can, um, do the dynamic program. The only difference in all of these, all of these channels is that the, the cardinality of the controllers at the receiver and the centers change. Okay. Uh, and that's it. Similarly, I can do it for the interference channel. So again, I have two senders and two receivers. There's a forward interference channel and there's a backward interference channel. Again, there are four controllers there. Each of the controller maintains their own private controller. And then again, I can write a dynamic program to find the parameters of parameters of these controllers. All right. So this, with this, I want to conclude, I would say that in this talk, uh, we presented a new framework to study these channels with active noisy feedback, uh, when none such framework existed before, uh, using this framework, we studied various Gauss, various multi-user Gaussian channels and showed that there exists a dynamic program to find optimum strategies within the class of linear Markovian strategies. And then for the special case of point to point channel, we actually find the Shalja Kellat scheme uh, for the passive noiseless feedback uh, through our framework. And there are a lot of questions that one can ask, like, you know, and build upon this kind of work. 
so we, one crucial assumption we make for a general point-to-point -point channel is that there is a correspondence between one-to-one -one correspondence between the uh, belief pi t of s and u t of s and the question is when can this be satisfied and when can this not be satisfied what is the minimum cardinality of um, the controller uh, uts and so on what is the minimum cardinality of uts for gaussian channels uh, the strategies that we find are they globally optimal if not how far are they from globally optimal uh, can we extend these how can we extend these ideas to channels with memories or with delayed feedback etc can we find an equivalent of posterior matching scheme for point to point channel with active noisy feedback based on this framework uh, can we find this posterior matching scheme for other noisy feedback channels such as mac channel broadcast channel and so on and then finally like you know can I, this is a new idea in decentralized control without any common information can i use this kind of framework for other decentralized control problem beyond communications um so these are some interesting questions that one can uh, that come out of this work and i think with this i what i would like to conclude and i'll be happy to take any questions um thank you depan show uh, for the great talk and yeah if anyone has any questions you can either like put them in the chat or feel free to like just unmute yourself and ask well mm -hmm. while we are waiting for a question like from the audience i so i, I want to understand so like uh, so the main innovation here is like formulating the problem as a like basically control problem which basically let led you to get to a dp like formulation is that mm -hmm. correct that's right um and then like yeah like like you said you actually I, I had one thought but you have i can see it's already in the slide like like what do you think would take it to like extend it to like other similar settings for example like uh places with memory or like um so yeah. for Gaussian case like memory and delayed feedback i think are like simpler problems um because basically you will act add another state of the system memory is just another state so like you just add another state uh, computationally it, it might add something more but conceptually i don't think it does uh even delayed feedback like you know uh, like people have uh, like people have basically uh the way people have actually used dynamic program for noiseless feedback for these problems basically you can use a similar ideas here so i don't think i think these are like kind of uh, low hanging things um yeah and then actually i like to follow up what about if your noise is not gaussian um so again so these are the Ga the gaussian channels i took are kind of simpler to simpler channels but if they're not gaussian mm -hmm. so again for that like question is can i find a post equivalent of posterior matching scheme for like you know this general channel so i want to go back to like this um uh, my this slide this is a point to point channel right so remember that i start like the receiver puts some belief on sender's message and the sender puts a belief on receiver's belief can i can i basically formulate a posterior matching scheme using this that's kind of the, one of the questions that one could ask uh and if i think if one can do that that will be really good no, so, so what exactly do you mean by posterior matching scheme here so, um for noiseless feedback we know a posterior matching scheme that achieves capacity mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so the question is, can I find a similar scheme uh, based on these belief structure for this kind of channel? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one one last thing, actually, I would like to point out is like one. I think one interesting way to think about these belief on belief things is that. Remember that I told you that in decentralized control without any common information, there is this like infinite hierarchy of beliefs that one player has to put a belief on another player's belief and the other player has to put on, put a belief on this new belief and so on. Right. Um, yeah. One, one way I can like make sense of this framework is that why, how, am, how am I able to break this like infinite hierarchy of beliefs? Okay. That's if, if that is a question uh, one can think like, you know, in high school, like, you know, we have seen this kind of problems where suppose X is equal to one over one plus one over one plus one over and so mm -hmm. on, right? It's like infinite problem. So what you do is that you basically say that one part of one over one plus is like X. And then I'm, I'm able to solve this as a quadratic equation and I can find the X, right? 
in yeah. some sense this is what i'm trying to do here that i'm starting with like you know this uh auxiliary controller and i'm saying that somehow the the dynamics of this auxiliary controller are the same as the dynamics of this next layer belief so if the, the the dynamics are the same then i have basically uh, found a way to break this like infinite hierarchy of beliefs if that makes sense not at yeah no that that was very illustrative thanks <laughs> um is uh, are there any other questions from the audience great um if not maybe let's thank a speaker and like we are ab about time uh, and yeah feel free to reach out to the bunch thank you all right thank you so much